The last home lab tour I did was in 2023. A lot has changed in that amount of time. Let's catch up. Hey there, home lovers, self hosters, IT pros, and engineers. Rich here. October 26th, 2023 was the last time that I did a home lab tour. You know, it feels like yesterday, but it wasn't. It was over a year and a half ago. So much has changed in my home lab, and over that time, I've shared all of that with you guys, but I really haven't put the entire thing together and run through it as it stands. So, in this video, let's remedy that. What do you say? The first video here is gonna be a hardware only tour, and in a week or so, we'll drop a software tour as well. So without further ado, let's get to the good stuff. Let's start with what's not changed in a year and a half. At the top of my 42U rack is the same Unify Aggregator Pro switch still in service to this day. It has been a rock solid 10 gig SFP plus switch and with the four 25 gig SFP 28 ports has allowed me to connect some very high speed servers and downstream network gear as well. Next on the stack of not changed is my Frankincense PFSense firewall that I built way back in 2022. To this day, the Sophos SG330 Rev2 chassis I bought has been rock solid and reliable, and PFSense has been solid right along with it. These days, I'm paying for 5 gigabit internet, and the SG330 with its dual 10 gig connections is easily still handling the traffic. I know a lot of people have been leaving PFSense for Unify for a variety of reasons, and Unify really has gotten their game together in terms of taking firewalling seriously, but I'm still really happy with PFSense and I'm paying for the yearly plus subscription. Personally, I think the features that I'm able to leverage in PFSense still beat out ubiquities, but it might only be a matter of time until the killer features I'm using, like native tail scale, PF blocker NG, and so on, get surpassed by Unify, but until then, I'm going to stay here. Moving on. Next is my Unify Enterprise 24 PoE top of rack switch. This is still the same switch and again, it's working great serving all the miscellaneous base T network connections I have in my rack. The only real downside is the fact that it is full, like completely full. I'm at capacity and at some point I'm gonna have to upgrade to more ports, but when and to what is up for debate in the future. All right, let's get into what's really changed now. First on the list is my Quadnode Supermicro test server. I built this server back in June of last year to be my dedicated platform for testing all things hyperconverged. I'm still in awe of the fact that this single 2U chassis houses four entirely independent servers in it. This system is completely impractical for a home lab. It has eight Xeon Gold 6132 CPUs, 512GB of DDR4 ECC memory, and is full of 24 480GB Intel DC SSDs. I've used this system to test Nutanix CE, Platform 9, Verge IO, and so many other miscellaneous systems. But here's the thing, it's not worth it. It's loud, power hungry, it's loud, I said that twice for emphasis, and it spends most of its time powered off. But Rich, why did you build it then? You said you loved it in the video. Yes, I did, and yes, I still do. I think this system is effing incredible, and I love the fact it has the density and power in such a small package. It's just entirely impractical for a home lab. I was intended to use it as a test platform for real virtualization to see how it ran on real hardware and not fake it using nested virtualization, and this system is perfect for that. Next up is my most recently built server, my new storage system that features not 12, but 24 3.5 inch bays in it. This system runs TrueNAS Community, formerly known as TrueNAS Scale, and is where I hold all of my non-virtualization data. All of my video footage that I shoot, all of my Plex data, Nextcloud data, it runs storage, and it also acts as a secondary NFS mount for Proxmox ISOs, templates, and so on. It's stupid powerful with dual Xeon Gold 6130 CPUs, an absolutely massive 768 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC memory, and currently has two pools built. The first being around 120 terabytes of slow storage built on top of 14 terabyte mechanical disks, and the second being nearly 67 terabytes of fast storage built on top of enterprise SAS SSDs. The system is such a fantastic piece of hardware. I have nothing but positive things to say about this system. If I had the chance to build it again, I 100% would. It's quiet, has storage for days, and it's just a rock solid foundation for a storage server. It's seen even more upgrades since I built the server on the channel with you guys. For example, it's now connected by a 100 gig QSFP28 DAC using a Mellanox Connect X5 card. It's really just the baddest ass storage system that I have ever personally built, and I would highly recommend it for anyone looking to create the storage server of their dreams, assuming TrueNAS doesn't screw it up somehow. Moving on. Now, let's talk about what has to be my favorite server in my rack, my 45 drives Proxinator system. The Proxinator is the only piece of server hardware not hand-built by me, and is the centerpiece of my home lab. 
The system, made by 45 drives, rocks an AMD Epic 8324P 32-core CPU, 256GB of DDR5 ECC RAM, roughly 3.5TB of ZFS storage for VMs and containers, and has a Mellanox Connect X5 100GB card connecting it to the rest of my home lab. And if you didn't figure out by the name, it's running Proxmox as well. This system was my first experience with 45 drives gear, and I've been nothing but impressed with their design, build quality, and customer support. If you're a business looking to move to Proxmox from VMware and value having a partner with North American support in your time zone, you need to look at them. You guys probably remember when I did a bunch of videos about this system. It's been running solidly since then, and I just can't say enough positive things about 45 drives and their gear. I did do some minor upgrading on this host though. It's now secretly running an older NVIDIA 3070 GPU inside that I've been using for Plex transcoding and running LLMs against. Their internal chassis design makes the GPU accessible right behind the front bezel, which I think is a super cool feature. This brings me to my Synology DS3622XS Plus. It's not new. In fact, it was in the last home lab video as well. It's holding roughly 73 terabytes of storage, and it used to be my solution for all things backup in my home lab using Synology Active Backup for Business. However, I moved to Proxmox, and Synology doesn't seem to have any interest in backing up Proxmox via ABB. So these days, its only job is backing up client workstations, backing up my Google workspace for the channel, and that's about it. As a side note, I am super proud of these things here. They're just simple, flat 3D printed panels I designed to take up roughly 25% of the rack's opening, leaving space to center the Synology and make it look like it belongs in my rack. I'll put my designs up on our printables page if you're in the same boat as me and looking to make your 19-inch rack look better with one of these Synologies. Just two more pieces of gear to go here. Next up is the Dell R730 XT host that I've been using as a backup target test box. The box features two Intel Xeon E5 2620v3 CPUs, 384GB of DDR4 ECC memory, and is currently filled with 12 768 terabyte enterprise SAS SSDs that started their lives in a Dell Unity SAN. Top that off with 25GB networking, and it's a pretty damn impressive backup testing rig. I've also made changes in the power protection department. Last time I ran through my home lab, I was running on an APC SmartUp's 2200RM UPS to protect my entire system. As my home lab gear stack started to grow though, I was getting closer to the top end of the 2200RM, and so I started looking for something more robust. So I replaced the 2200RM with a SmartUp's X3000. This system, like the previous SmartUp's 2200RM, is 120 volt, but it has a higher wattage thanks to its 30 amp service. The next step up from here would be to move to 240 volt, which will require running more wire and having some major power panel work done since I'm running out of physical space. Yes, I know that running 120 volt instead of 240 or 208 volt is less efficient, and yes, I would have loved to have upgraded my circuits, but that would have been a lot more money, and so I made that a problem for Future Rich instead. There's one last piece of functional gear here to talk about, and that's the Mikrotik CRS510 that functions as my 100 gig switch. Again, you guys saw the video on this, but here it is, fully in use, flinging the packets between my proxinator and my primary storage. This switch is incredibly affordable, offers super high performance, and if you're looking to get into 100 gig, definitely worth the upgrade. And that's it, friends. Next video, we'll do a full dive into the software stack and what I'm running these days, how they're running, and why. If you want to get any further details about anything you saw here, let me know in the comments, and I'll work them into the next video. Thanks for watching.